everyone, welcome to co-mentor events. And for those who are of you who are joining us for the second event, welcome again. And my name is Maggie. Thanks again for joining today. It's really great to have you all here with us. And I'm really excited to be here with our speaker, Virale, to um, listen to her share more about um, her experience building software from scratch, the user-centric approach. If you have any questions throughout the event, feel free to raise a virtual hand to let her know. Alternatively, you can also type them directly in a chat and we'll make sure that we get to as many of them as possible to at the Q&A section in the end. So Verily, the stage is all yours. Hi everyone, thank you Maggie for welcoming me. Um, I'm going to tell you something today about building software from scratch, the user-centric approach. Um, and let me share my screen and pull my presentation up. So um, as Maggie said, and in the chat that has been said, if there are any questions, just raise your hand and feel free to interrupt me and I will answer uh, the questions straight away. Um, after the presentation, we will also have a Q&A session. So if you um, ask your, well, if you ask your questions via the chat, we will answer them later. So today, building software from scratch, the user-centric approach. So what are we actually going to talk about today? First, I will give a brief introduction so you know um, who is talking. Um, also something more about uh, my company, Analytic Health. Then we will go into an agile software development process and what it looks like. Then we'll talk about the challenges that often come up when you're um, building software. Then I will talk about my experiences and the learnings that I, well, that we had in our own company. I will do a quick wrap up. And then, as I said, the Q&A section where I will answer all your questions and uh, resources. So after this presentation, I will share um, the presentation slides with you as well. So if there's anything that you would like to take note of, um, be aware that I will share everything afterwards. So who am I? Um, so I'm Veerle. I'm coming in from the Netherlands today. I live there. Um, and I graduated as a data scientist in 2015 from Tilburg University. Um, after that, I started working at various companies as a data scientist. So I worked at a large um, energy company. Uh, that my, was my first job. And then in 2018, I got into the healthcare sector or the pharmaceutical sector as a data scientist. When I was working there, I had the idea to start my own company. So I founded my own business, Hybride, and I uh, did some data science consultancy there. And during that time, I met my current business partner, Greg, um, with who I'm now I'm running Analytic Health. I am a developer. I develop mainly in R and Shiny, but also in Node and Vue. And that's a basically a quick overview of uh, me. Then a bit more about um, our company. So together with my business partner, Greg, and our head of operations, Jana, we develop tools and web applications for the healthcare sector. So we gather and analyze healthcare data in order to retrieve value from the data. Because we believe we can accelerate innovation in healthcare by giving access to high quality data sources and by providing healthcare professionals with the tools they need to analyze the data. We gather healthcare data from the UK on a daily basis, all like via open source um, data sources. And we also use internal sales data from pharmaceutical companies. Most of the tools we develop are developed in R. For example, we have Shiny applications and we have APIs that are also written in R. Besides that, we have applications in Node and Vue. And as you can see, we have um, three kind of uh, broad applications. We have Farmly Analytics and Farmly Cloud Data, and then we have the Farmly Portal. Farmly Cloud Data is our marketplace for healthcare data. So this is the place where you can have access to all your high quality healthcare data sources in the UK. Then Farmly Analytics is an application built on top of that data to provide you really with data insights. And the Farmly Portal is the place where all those applications basically come together. So that's basically our homepage because on top of our like um, Farmly products, we also develop some dedicated applications for some of our customers, which are mainly pharmaceutical companies. So let's start the agile software development process. So how do you build software using a user-centric approach? 
And then the first question which comes to mind of, okay, why do we need a process to begin with? Because we can just build software, right? We can just jump in, start, into, um, start to code and build features. But we do need a process because a process helps you to align expectations between developers or your team members and your stakeholders or your users. But it also helps you with uh, formalizing how you should deal with new requests or with bugs or with new tasks. And um, if you have a process in place or a plan, then it will prevent unnecessary rework in the end. Besides that, it helps you to stay within budget and obviously a process helps you with plan. So I think having a process is a really good idea um, if you are building your software. And then the question, why do we care as a developer? Why do we care about such a process? Why do we care about being user-centric? Because after all, the only thing we do is like coding, right? But depending on the context, you as a developer might actually be involved in all parts of the process. So you can be part of, as a developer of a team with like say 20 developers and a couple of UX designers and dozens of project managers and all that, then your role will be obviously very different then from a role, for example, in our company, where we have a small development team of just like one, two, three developers in which you are very close to the user. So as a developer, um, depending on the business you're in, you might be involved in different parts of the process. Besides that, if you, you know about the process and if you understand the process, you might also feel less frustrated when some decisions along the way change. I think we all recognize the feeling that we developed something and then two weeks later, it needs to change. You know, you, you made something, you put effort in it and then a couple of weeks later, then everything needs to be 180 degrees different. 